Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today, I'd like to thank our sponsor from Red House Wellness Retreat for sponsoring our show today. And also, I would love to thank Raina for coming on the show. She is part of our podcast community, and she has her own podcast on our show. So look for her podcast. You can type her name in anywhere, and she's on all the distribution channels. And today she's here because she wants to talk about bullying in the workforce. And I love this topic. Raina, tell everybody a little about yourself and then tell us about bullying in the, in the workforce, because it's something that's very prevalent in all work. Uh, environments and people don't discuss it or talk about it. They get come home and they're stressed out because things are happening in the workforce that are really taking a toll on their mental, physical, and spiritual health. So take it away, Raina. I want to hear about all this. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Stacey. Thanks again for having me. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, well, thank you. Uh, so just a quick introduction. My name is Reina Gandhi. I work with women in the workforce who want to stay in the workforce and move up that career ladder and are come up against different barriers, whether they're internal or external. So it could be um, not being able to advocate for yourself or feeling a lot of imposter syndrome or the inner critic. I work with them individually, but then I also work with organizations who want to help their employees help their women help retain them help them grow professionally so that is and that's through my business called rising tide consulting now tell us about the bullying in the workforce you know a lot of times you know as naive as i may have thought when i was younger i thought wow you know you, you get out of high school you go to college you know um you come out of college people are thinking on a different level they just look at life differently and you know that bullying all that negativity the gossip the talk all that stuff goes away, you know, because people are mature now, you know, but you get into the workforce and that's not always the, the truth. And, you know, and there is a lot of bullying in the workforce. And what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, I think workforce bullying, it, it comes up in many different ways, right? So it might be a good idea to start by defining it just a little bit narrowly. Uh, it's this repeated mistreatment of someone sometimes it's more than someone and then sometimes it's by for someone but by many perpetrators right so it's this abusive conduct that happens that shows up as intimidating threatening humiliating um and it what ends up happening is it often interferes with the person who's being humiliated intimidated and threatened uh, their ability to get their work done. Yeah. And it's a really big deal because it creates this psychological power. It's this psychological power imbalance and between the person who's doing the bullying and the one who's receiving it. Yeah. And the person who's receiving it develops this feeling of, of helplessness, right? So, um, and it's it's there's nothing that says that it's illegal. So when you think about bullying and you think about harassment, harassment is very different. Harassment hinges on being mistreated based on a protected class. So you've got sex, race, religion, national origin, um, and it's illegal. Yes. But then bullying, because it's not illegal, mm -hmm. it it's toxic, it's soul crushing, it's all the things, but it's not against the law. And so it's a, it's a little bit trickier to to navigate sometimes. And, and the reality is that there's, about 30% of the people in the workforce are bullied at work. And yeah. this, and as we said, you know, it, it, it's a lot of different behaviors, but it's very difficult to hold someone accountable for that. So the things that we've all seen people get away with in the workforce, I think is ridiculous, but yet it continues to happen. And there's nothing that's necessarily done on a systemic organizational level that sometimes can eliminate that. But that's really where it needs to start. And oftentimes that also leading by example and making sure managers and leaders need to make sure that they're, they have a zero tolerance policy. And I think a lot of times leaders are caught up in other things, focused on different challenges, and they're not necessarily thinking about how their people are being impacted. But it's very costly to organizations when you have police because 
it impacts productivity, it impacts morale and it and you know retention ultimately. Now, when when people are bullying each other, is it through gossip a lot of times you see? Is it through come to the person and making a snide remark on you know their performance or how they maybe not have achieved a certain thing? And uh, you know, so what are what are common ways that you see in the workforce that people are bullying other people that are having a harsh impact on others? Yeah, so about 60% of bullies are bosses, and that means 40% aren't. So yeah. they're not managers, they're peers, or sometimes they're even lower level uh, people reporting up to, to the person, right? Yeah. And what that tells us is it, come, it can come from any direction, right? So uh, in general, you can categorize it in almost four subsets, right? You, you've got what you were saying is exactly right. It can be, it can show up in so many different ways. Toxicity shows up by gossip. It shows up by insulting people in public. Um, so one, the first way I would say is the aggressive communicator. And yeah. this person tends to make a public scene and shows up as yelling or sending angry emails or demonstrating some kind of verbal hostility. Uh, it's, sometimes it's even aggressive body language, right? So right. what they're trying to do is they're trying to instill this fear in their target. Um, and then sometimes it not only instills fear in the target, but then it instills fear in, in other coworkers as well. Like, oh, I've got to watch, I got to watch myself in front of so-and-so, otherwise I'm going to be the next person, right? Yeah. Um, then you've got the constant critic. Uh, so they may not yell at you necessarily, face to face. Uh, they may not do it in public. They may do it privately. They disparage basically you so, so frequently that you begin to doubt all of your abilities and it wears you down. Yeah. And this again, impacts the quality of your work, right? So yeah. it's hard, it's really hard to do your job if you're afraid to check your email because you don't, it gives you anxiety because you see the, you know, in your inbox that this, there's an email from this person and, and, and it gives you anxiety. And what ends up happening is that impacts your performance. And then if it impacts your performance, you're worried about getting fired. Yeah. So this really humiliates you either one-on-one -on -one or in public points out your mistakes and takes credit for your work and then leaves you out of things socially, professionally, just shuns you essentially, treats you like an outcast. Then there's the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is a master manipulator. Uh, this, this bully withholds resources. So whether that's instructions, information, some kind of time, uh, preventing you from getting the help or the resources that you need, this Bully essentially is setting you up to fail. Uh, so maybe they will only share one or two steps of a process, but really there's four or five. Right. Right. So, or they may give you an unreasonable, if they're your boss and they give you an unreasonable amount of work. Yeah. And there's a way that you can finish it by the deadline. So they're setting you up to fail. They might give you a poor performance review when your work isn't actually that poor, but they're trying to push you out. Yeah. Uh, or they're trying to, or they, maybe they punish you for being late to meetings, but they don't punish others. Like they call you out on it, but they're not calling out others. So there's that, that gatekeeper as well. And then the last one is what's called a two headed snake. And that's the one that does all this meddling behind the scenes. So they pretend to be your friend when they're in front of you, they pretend to support you and champion you. Meanwhile, they're completely undermining you behind your back. So this one is, for obvious reasons, the most difficult to, to detect and the most difficult to deal with because you don't necessarily know that it's happening. You don't know that unless somebody tells you or you catch them in the act or, or something along those lines, right? So yes. this, this is your impact on your reputation. And this person is calling you maybe unreliable or they're saying that you're, you're unskilled. So this is very much impacting your reputation, but yet they're being very friendly to your face. Right. Um, so you may not even know that this is happening unless someone breaks the ranks, right? And tips mm -hmm. you off. But then the bully may not ever admit to it. Even if you go and and you address them, they may not even say anything. So how do you combat that? Yeah. Right? And then some bullies, I gave you four examples, but some bullies 
they adopt many versions of these. And so it, it can get complicated that way too. And, you know, it, it's so hard. Like, how do you break the bully cycle? So, you know, you're going home, you're probably really upset. So-and-so was on my case today. So-and-so said this, so-and-so said that, but they don't say it to the other person. And, you know, after a while it gets emotionally, you know, I've known people that are were looking for new jobs because it got so stressful in the workforce that they didn't even want to be at that job anymore. And I, you know, and, and sometimes I wonder if that's the purpose, you know, why they do the bullying is because they want to get these people out. They don't like these people. So they, they bully them and they stress them out to a point where like, you know, I can't take this anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. You know, so how do you, how do you deal with bullying? You know, what is the best way to, to, you know, deal with this? Yeah. I mean, when you think about it, it's really hard because it impacts you on so many different levels. It's like you said, you you take it home with you because it it's sad and it's frustrating. And you go to work to do your work and you show up as your best self. And yet you come across these things and you feel like you don't have control, right? And I think control is a big part of it. So to the extent that you can take control, there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, because there are a lot of emotions that come up with bullying. And yeah. it's really hard to deal with this all these feelings and not necessarily knowing who you can trust at work to share them with yeah also if you share them too much then you might be adding to that toxic environment as well right so right. there's a balance and so some of the things that you can do is in part of the communication so if someone starts to bully you if you start speaking up early on before it becomes a consistent problem yes uh Right. And it's also it's not even just about speaking up. You can speak up in pu public. You can speak up in private. But you also want to use strong body language. Oftentimes when we're getting bullied, we, we kind of shrink. We we shrink ourselves. Yeah. And instead, you know, just standing up tall or sitting up tall and your nose is up and you're looking at them straight in the face, in the eye. And what's going to happen is if you just let it go and you don't do those things, it's going to continue to happen and it could get worse. Right. So you wanna, if you recognize it early on before that power imbalance gets cemented, let's say it's going to be that after that, it's very difficult to fix. So you want to squash it in the moment. So you can call attention to their values and maybe say, um, I know you care that, that you, you care about everyone feeling very valued but when you do X, when you yell at me in meetings or, or something along those lines, right, it undermines that intention. Maybe we can try and then give another suggestion. So we can try why in the future. Yeah. Or you can explain why it's a problem. I notice you yell at me in front of other people. And when you do that, it makes it hard for us to foster a team environment or yeah. it creates psychological unsafety or whatever it is, right? right. Um, and then sometimes you can... Another tactic you can use, and it, and it works, is you can emphasize their name a lot in the conversation. Okay. Stacy, I hear what you're saying, but Stacy, I need you to stop doing X. I treat you with respect, Stacy, and I need you to do the same, right? right. So you, you're you really addressing that person, and that person is receiving it as something that's stern. So that's one way to do it. Um, the Another thing that you want to do is you want to document as much as you can. Um, you want to document your performance mm -hmm. and you want to document any of the mistreatment. So mm -hmm. if you keep a journal of the five W's, right? So who, what, when, where, and why of all the things that are happening that are impacting you so negatively. This way you'll have a record and you can also keep track of who was present when the bullying occurred, right? So yeah. you have witnesses. Um, and so you have people who are going to back you up. And I think that's really, it, it sounds ridiculous, but it's very important, especially because we have to remember that when, if you were to take this to HR, let's say HR doesn't have your best interests at heart there, HR is thinking about the organization, right? So, yes. but even if you decide to, to report the bully, at least you have the concrete examples of the behaviors that you're describing. And if you have emails that show this behavior, this continued behavior, angry emails or bullying emails, keep those. And then also keep emails from people who are praising you. So you yeah. can show them the, the difference, right? Yeah. Um, you can see that, you know, most people are sending emails like this and this person is 
the same project and this person is saying this. Yeah. Um, you know, and then exactly what you said earlier, which is you take it home sometimes. So you have to find what works for you as well. So whether that's yoga or painting or spending time with friends over the weekend or um, seeing family or seeking professional help from a therapist or a counselor, whatever it is that fills that proverbial bucket, right? Yeah. Um, because if you're going to, like I said, if you're going to vent a lot at work, you're going to strain your relationships as well. People are going to think you're knocking on their door and they're going to be like, oh no, here she comes again. She's going to keep complaining. I have all these things I have to get done. It's not It's not helpful to anyone if you, right. if you continue with that. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do some research around what company policies are around bullying or mistreatment or any kind of verbal abuse um, so that you have something to reference. Right. So because it's not illegal, a lot of companies don't, don't have formal policies. So it's worth some time to research either. Maybe there's sometimes there's a handbook. Maybe there's a document that lays out what the organization's values are, what their expectations are. Um, and, you know, ultimately, I have been bullied in many different ways. I've had uh, I've had information kept from me. Mm -hmm. I've had someone who's been very friendly to my face, the same person who kept information from me so I couldn't do my job well, also was very friendly to my face and then was very, very not unfriendly and very unkind behind my back. And ultimately, I went to the what would be the equivalent of the, the C-suite, the CEO, who I reported to, and they did nothing about it. And for me, that was a clear signal that this is not the right place for me to thrive. And I come from, as a leader, a, a space of always lifting others up. And yes. if this person is setting the tone and there's not a lot of psychological safety, especially when I'm doing things that are ethically correct and somebody else is doing things that were ethically incorrect, which is part of the reason that I started finding things, yeah. uh, finding things out, you know, in my own work. And, and I was punished for it. I was treating, I was ill treated for that. So yeah. that's when, you know, you have, it, it may be time to go. And you know, since that job, and I've, I've, I've had bullying in different ways. And, and that's, you know, part of the reason that I'm really, really passionate about this is because Sometimes it's your boss. Sometimes it's not even your boss. It's somebody who's a peer who doesn't even have any control over your workload and yet seems to have all this control over your workload because they're with they're keeping information, right? Yeah. Um, so if you do have the opportunity to talk to your boss, I think it's a good idea. Understand the situation really well. It's very, it, it's so specific based on the, the circumstances. But you would, you know, describe the facts and then discuss any strategies that you've tried, right? You always want to go in with, here's what's happened and here's what I've done to combat the situation um, and then explain that none of this has worked. And if it's, again, your boss, that's the problem. Then you want to seek advice from someone else you trust, but you have to be really careful. Yeah. Um, you're going to need to gauge all those relationships within your company because, uh it could get back to your boss and it could get worse. Right. And, then, you know, and then the other, the last thing I mentioned very briefly, which is just to remember that HR's interests are going to lie with the company. They're not in your favor necessarily. Um, my husband, he worked for somebody who said to him, an institution is never going to love you. And that's, that's exactly right. Like the yeah. institution is, is there for the institution. So think about whether or not you can make a business case um, instead of a personal plea or talk to whomever you approach to see if the cost of the bully to the company in terms of turnover or absenteeism or lost productivity, any of that documentation, documentation is going to help right. what you need to show to HR. Um, and then also being very clear, if you do go to HR, do you want them to know what happened? Do you want them to know how to help you? What is the purpose of going to HR? That needs to be clear as well. So um, think about what you'll do if you don't get what you're looking for. Right. Would you leave? Can you afford to leave? 
some would say, you know, try and stick out, stick it out until you find another job. But it's right. a very specific situation. If your dignity, your self-respect, your psychological well-being, those are important things. And yeah. so is the paycheck. So you have to be able to plan these things out wisely as, as much as you possibly can. Um, about 77% or so of bullied individuals, they leave their job. Uh, so they either leave on their own terms. Sometimes they get fired because their performance suffers. Yeah. So there's a lot of short-term and long-term stress around this topic. How do people deal with this on an emotional level? Like this is a lot of emotions, a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, you know, how, you know, you're, you're like, we were talking about earlier, you know, you're, you're going through all this stress at the work, you know, at, during, during the, the work day, you're bringing it home because you're so frustrated. Then you're probably waking up and you're probably not even wanted to get out of bed because you know, you have to get out of bed to go to work and you know, what's, you know, ahead of you. And you know that, you know, you, you, you might have anxiety because, oh my God, what's going to happen today? Is that person going to come over to me and, and say X, Y, and Z to me, you know, and all these scenarios. And what the biggest thing people do is we tend to think about, issues that haven't even occurred yet and we put scenarios in our head like and then we get ourselves all riled up and we're in the present moment but yet we're thinking about oh my god when i go to work today is this person going to say this x y and z you know and you put all these things in your head and by the time you get to work you're already stressed out you already have anxiety and you know that doesn't help you as an individual and if something does occur are you going to handle it as well when you have all these emotions raveled up inside you? You know, what could we do about it? That's a really good question. And I've had all of those feelings. So I know what that feels like. I can tell you from just a broad perspective, some of those things that we talked about a little earlier, yoga, painting, exercise, running, whatever it is that you like to do, yeah. sticking with that routine, because that's mm -hmm. something that you can control. Yes. I also had to teach myself to focus on the facts, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So this person may be saying X, Y, and Z about you. Is that really true? Or to, is that a, is that a Raina problem? Or is that a, is that a Stacy problem? If Stacy's the bully, sorry, Stacy. Right, that's you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, or let's turn it around because I feel terrible saying No, that. that's okay, I get it. <laughs> You know, is that is that a Stacey problem or is that a Raina problem? That's a Raina problem if Raina's a bully. So yeah. that's on her, you know, and so that's part of it, but that doesn't necessarily make you feel better in the long term, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. things are still happening in that moment. And if yeah. you've tried all these other things and they haven't worked and you're waiting it out, let's say, because you're looking for another job, other opportunities, um, some of the things that you can do is remind yourself, like I said, of the facts, what is the actual truth and stick with the facts. Also asking for, if, if going into the office feels unsafe for you because you know that you're going to be impacted, see if you can change your work arrangements and work from home or remotely or whatever it yeah. is. If you can't do that, then I have seen people move to different floors so they don't have to see those people who are bullying yeah. them. Mm -hmm. oftentimes those people there are no consequences right yeah. uh, which is a terrible thing but that's I, I can't tell you Stacey how common this is this is so common and it's a terrible terrible thing you would think that organizations would hold people accountable yeah they often don't because for many reasons one of which is they're not they don't they're only sometimes hearing one side of it or they've got too many other challenges that they're dealing with or what or the leader just doesn't think it's an actually an issue. Right. So, so for all of those reasons, trying to move, remove yourself from it. And if the, if the workplace becomes toxic, so if somebody else is getting bullied also, right? Yeah. If somebody else is getting bullied first, if you see it or you hear it mm -hmm. and you don't do anything about it, that silence is essentially giving you, giving permission to that bully to right. act in whichever way that they want to act. So if you're able to speak in the moment, speak in the moment, do it right then. Let's not talk to each other that way or let you just bring it up yeah. and nip the bud there, right? But if 
somebody else is being bullied and it's impacting you because it's they're coming to you and it's they're creating a toxic environment you want to because it's that it's adding they're not necessarily creating it but it's adding to the situation yeah then then it's there's only so much venting that's going to be helpful. Yeah. So removing yourself from that. Yeah. Out of the equation so that you can focus. You know, the one bad apple example brings everybody else down, right? So, yes. so that's also really important to be able to separate and stay away from that. And then just focus on your work. And again, it's very easy to say that, but create an environment in which you can in which you'll you'll thrive and you'll succeed because at the end of the day and then get help through the employee relations those conversations are typically uh confidential yeah and they may have some tactics that you can use work with a coach right mm -hmm. or work with a therapist or work with um a counselor also that would yeah. that would be helpful as well depending on you know your work environment and what the availability is and, and what your options are I think all of those things are helpful. And then of course, surrounding yourself with people who demonstrate in their own ways that you are not what this person is making you out to be. Yeah. Because that, that hurts because your feelings get hurt on, yes. on top of everything else. Your, your work performance suffers. So many things suffer, but your feelings yeah. get hurt too. So just being around people who are going to lift you up, making sure that you're sitting with them if you all go out for lunch or something along those lines. So either remove yourself or stick with the people. So don't remove yourself completely, but stick with people who are going to support you. Yes, oh, that's great advice. And I think a lot of times too, is that we shouldn't take things personally. You know, I, I think a lot of times when these people are bullying, I think they have their own issues that they're dealing with inside. And it's a lot of anger, not being happy with themselves, not being happy with their lives or who they've become, not being happy, even in their own work, you know, job environment and taking it out on others. And a lot of times all this hatred, all this anger or jealousy, sometimes, you know, people are jealous of other individuals because they may have qualities that they don't have, or they may be excelling in areas that they're not good in. And instead of being able to commend the people, they sometimes react in really negative ways. And, you know, um, a lot of these individuals that are bullies have a lot of emotional issues themselves. And it's really people, like you said, don't take it personally because it's really not the person. It's the people that are bullying that have these mental issues that they need to deal with on their own level. And they may never, ever get help because a lot of them don't want to um, get help. They're in denial or they just, you know, don't see it. They just, you know, or they see it deep down inside. They just don't care because they're just, they're just so miserable inside and they don't think that they could, you know, things are ever going to get better because of that negative attitude that they carry. And so I think people have to realize too, that don't take it personally. Don't, you know, don't let it get to you. Just worry about yourself and worry about, you know, like you said, what are the constructive ways that I could handle this and using all the, all the tools and strategies that you mentioned in this conversation today to be able to get yourself over that hump. Yeah. I think the key, one of the keys is not to use the reactive approach, right? To the extent that you can, we talked earlier about nipping it in the bud as early as possible. But if organizations can be the first line of defense and say, you know, the first line of defense against all workplace stressors should be prevention, right? So yeah. preventing harm from occurring in the first place and putting the, those, those values and those norms in place on teams, in departments, in organizations, so that organizations aren't paying the cost and the individuals aren't paying the cost either. There are definitely ways, you know, oftentimes in, in actually all the groups that I've ever led, I've always had group norms and we are very quick to call out that's not part of our, you know, we demonstrate respect there. I have always had a zero tolerance policy for disrespect. So if I, as the leader, am able to say, we're not gonna tolerate this. And then if something happens, having consequences for it. Yeah. That's what's going to make a difference. If they're if 
if we can have all these policies and we can have all these norms, but if if it's not respected, yeah. then that's also on the leader. So making sure if you're a leader that you are making it very clear. And if someone does do something that's inappropriate, that there are consequences to it. Yes, definitely. You're right. It, bullying is trauma. And what's happening is people are bringing whatever they're experiencing at work from their childhood also. Yes. Right? So mm -hmm. it's, it'll impact. So somebody behaving it, with me differently and behaving with you differently, or sorry, someone behaving with me in the same way that they behave with you, our reactions could be completely different. Yes. Um, so it's not just figure it out, right? It's sometimes it's more taxing on me than it is on you or vice versa. So really understanding how to be resourceful for yourself yeah and that individual level of focus mm -hmm. uh, is is going to be very very critical in this in this situation yes i i agree completely and i do believe a lot of this stuff sometimes is from our childhood years you know it's you know a, most of the time when you see people being very negative it resorts back to their childhood, to the to the root cause. And, you know, um, they just learn bad behavior in, a, in a, a dysfunctional environment and they carry those behaviors throughout. And, you know, and sometimes people were, were them themselves were bullied in school and they carry those behaviors because they're so angry inside. They want people to feel what they felt growing up. And it's sad, and but it, it's it's so true. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that has to be addressed. And it, and no matter if you're in, I think, in a small business or a medium sized business or a company or corporation, this is something that really, I think, should be stressed in all areas of businesses uh, that, that bullying is not tolerated and that, you know, they need to have strict rules and regulations about the, you know, zero tolerance for bullying. Yeah, and they have to be account. They have to hold people accountable. Yes. That's a lot of that communication. You can have all the writing and the values all over the walls and all over the documents, but if they're not abiding by that, that creates a tremendous amount of psychological unsafety. Oh, 100%. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you wanted to really emphasize on some important factors, what are some things you'd like to tell people that you think will help people, you know, if they're experiencing similar traumas like this? Or if there's a, a, a workforce out there that, you know, sees, you know, that wants to be able to have a more productive, you know, company, what are some things that you'd like to emphasize from today's conversation? Yeah, I think that what we were talking about earlier, first is what you said, it's not personal. It's, it's that person. It's a that person problem. It's not a you problem. Right. This, you know, your work ethic, you know, your capabilities, you know, your work product. Yes. Stick to the facts. Don't let that narrative change you based on something that somebody else said to you when you were younger. And then that inner critic comes in and then you start believing all the things that are being said by this person or being done by this person that you deserve it when stick to the facts. Yes. And if you have trouble sticking to the facts, find somebody who you can trust who, who can help you stick to those yes. facts and show you evidence of how what that person is saying and doing is not true. That doesn't take away from the pain, the, the feeling hurt, um, but that helps with knowing that you really are doing the best work that you can be doing. Right. Then also self-care whatever that means to you is really important. Making sure that you show up as an ally if somebody else is being bullied, mm -hmm. because then that also creates an environment that counteracts in a sense that more negative, ill-treating type of environment, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so I think that's also part of it. And speaking up is going to help create a different culture, a different set of values, if that's done consistently enough, that, you know, right. so and so you're not going to get away with it if you keep doing this, because we're going to, you know, you can't just keep interrupting this specific person and talking over her and yelling at her and all of the things, right? So yes. you stop it right there, and then it, it's helpful. 
Oh, definitely. I love it. And it, and it, and it's so important to take action and, and don't let the people, you know, walk all over you and don't accept it because you're better than that. And I think people have to realize that they're worth it. They're better. They, they, they do not deserve to be bullied. They do not deserve to have people saying negative things to them. And, you know, if you have a low self-worth, you know, you might just let people bully you, you know, because you think, well, I, I deserve it. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm, you know, I don't deserve any better, you know, before we go, you know, what do you say to those people that have low self-worth and, and, you know, are afraid to do something about it? It's not you, it's them. It's, it's, unfortunately, it's very common. And if it's that, if it's impacting you that much, that that person is not going to change. So if they're not leaving, honestly, sometimes the right thing to do for yourself is to leave. And, and I will say from my own experience, that when I was bullied, I it, it, it definitely impacts you. It doesn't matter how high your self-esteem is. It's going to impact you on some level, some form, right? So I was unsuccessful in getting that person to see eye to eye with me to stop the behavior. My boss was unsuccessful in doing it. And I felt like I had failed in my ability to change things and turn things around but I didn't fail myself because I left. And that's, you have to do what's right for you. And somebody else's behavior is going to impact you. But at the end of the day, you have agency over what you're willing to tolerate and, and use your resources to then find something else if that's not the right fit for you. I like that. They're not gonna change. Right, they're not gonna change. I, I think that th that's a, that's great advice. And I, I like that you shared your own personal experience as well, because, you know, so many people are out there and they might be afraid to talk. They might be afraid to, you know, come out of their shell and, and say, hey, I'm being bullied because they might be embarrassed, but it's okay. There's a lot of it going on. And the only way to change it is to speak up for yourself. Yeah. And I got bullied in my most senior positions. You know, so that's which, again, so you have to think about managing up, managing down, managing laterally. And so you don't know, as we talked about earlier, that you, where in the orange chart that bullying is coming from. It was coming from a peer yeah. who had no, should not have had any agency over my career. And yet I was not able to move the needle. And I had to sit with that for a long time and, and you know, do a lot of the things that I was uh, demonstrating, uh, I was explaining earlier. Right. Wow. It's, it's amazing how, how, how the world is and how people think they have the ability to talk down on other human beings, how they have the ability to cause, you know, stress in other people's lives by just doing negative things that they know are going to have negative outcomes. And, you know, and you know, maybe some people are so oblivion because they're so used to their behavior. They don't realize what they're actually doing to the other people and they don't care. You know, and that goes back to maybe, you know, how, how their own, their own personal problems as well. I think that they know, I, I think that they know, and they're just bullies. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the sense that I've gotten. They've gotten yeah. that feedback. I'm not the first person that woman believed. Right. I'm one of many. I stood up to her though. And yes. that's where it got worse. I see. Okay. And that's when I knew that this was not the right place. So there, it, it gets very, it, it, it's a very tricky and personal situation because it's what you just said, that how you respond, how I would have responded in that situation and somebody else would have responded could be completely different. Yes. So true. Now, what kind of services do you provide? Yeah. So I am a leadership and executive coach. I work with women who are struggling with a lot of these kinds of things, uh, wanting to address bullies, the inner critic, imposter syndrome, helping them as individuals change that narrative, right. understand where it's coming from, and then change that narrative so that they can be successful and stay in the workforce and thrive in their careers and make room 
for other women in at the C-suite level eventually, or at the director level, or at the early career level as well, right? Uh, so right. I work with organizations with ERGs to help women in the workforce with their professional development on that side of it. And then I also work with individuals with one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, so I do presentations and keynotes and one-on-ones and group coaching cohorts as well. I love it. Now, where can people find you? Yeah, so it's www.risingtideconsultingllc.com. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on Instagram as well. It's rising.tide.consulting. And I'm on LinkedIn. It's Raina, R-A-I-N-A, -A, my middle initial B, and then Gandhi, G-A-N-D-H-I. And if you go to LinkedIn and you reach out, I will definitely write back to you. Or if you email me, that's Raina at risingtideconsultingllc.com. I will definitely get back to you as well. And um, I have several resources that might be able to help in terms of bullying. So please do reach out and, and we can connect. And I can I love get those. It. Oh, this has been amazing. You know, and I think this is a topic that was really needed because there is so much that is going on in our society that, you know, people don't really talk about as much, you know, but there is a lot of bullying in the workforce and, you know, people really have to understand how to handle it appropriately and that there are ways to overcome it. And, you know, and that's what, you know, you're here for is to show them the options, to show them how to. And I, I really thank you for that. This has been a great podcast. And I thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I have been there. I have walked this walk and I wish there was someone there to help me. And so I really want to help anybody who is in this situation because there are alternatives. There are solutions. Right. Sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much. And I, I you, wish Susie. you a great day. Thank you so much. This has been great. Thanks for having me again. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You too.